worship you. Let's talk in life. Your presence, Lord. All I want is to worship you.
able to bless your name because there is no like you. It is testimony time. I'm trying to give you your name. It is testimony time. Are there overcomers in the house this morning? Why not just jump those same people for Jesus? Testimony here is from um, Sister Ibni, and she says, I thank God for his faithfulness, goodness, mercy, and loving kindness. Too numerous to mention, especially for my mom, who marks her 70th birthday today. Praise the Lord! Yeah. I pray for her that God will give her even more grace to live and see much of life and God's faithfulness. In Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank God for his faithfulness. I want to bless him for all that he has been to me. I want to thank God that it's just my enabler and one that's just really helping me. No one needs to feeling distressed. But I thank God for everything. Praise God. And I'm saying, God, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's just um, bless his name is worthy. You have a reason to thank God. This is one year of this very year. This Five years to one year. Can we just be excited and just bless the one again? You are not being part of it. But for me, I just think God has been awesome. Keeping us is really not easy. I think one of the greatest testimonies this year is that we are alive. Praise God. Why not just lift those hands and just worship him? And just say, Lord, it is you, it is not God. People that have more better possibilities than this good place, they have gotten our uh, um, terrible. From this year, but God has just been keeping us not because of our faithfulness, I am unfaithful, maybe, but it is just grace and mercy. So, Lord, I'm thanking you. This is me saying it is you, not my works, not my strength, not my anything, but just your grace and mercy. Thank you, Lord. We are praying that our testimony is come to you, Lord, and let it please you, even for the one that we may not even remember to mention. Please, Lord, from our heart, we say thank you. Be exalted, Lord God Almighty. Jesus, Good morning, church. Let somebody shout, Hallelujah! Let somebody shout a glorious Hallelujah! You are alive, you can stand on your feet. I want you to put your hand together and shout the victorious hallelujah. Amen. It's time for us to give our tithe. If you have your tithe with you, please can you come out? And uh, if Mount Media can help me with Micah 5, verse 2. Uh, it's a word for someone this morning. Micah 5. Verse 2. If you have your tithe with you, package it. The 10% of your monthly, weekly, daily income for many of us that do day to day activity of our businesses. Hallelujah. Amen. Micah 5 2. But thou, Bethlehem Ephraim, Though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me. Um, maybe a prayer that you want to pray for yourself, just put your name where the Bethlehem, uh, the Bethlehem Ephrates is and make a declaration unto the Lord. Father in heaven, I want to thank you especially this morning. I want to thank you for the life of your sons and your daughter that have brought forth their tithe. They have obeyed your word. And as you have decreed in your word, that as many that give unto you, that you will open the window of heaven unto their life. Father, I pray this morning, even before the end of this year, oh Lord, this one, you will open your window of heaven over their finances in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Father, I pray by the power in your name. You are the only one that get, give power for someone to get wet. In every areas of 
this your sons and your daughter have been looking toward your financial breakthrough. That before the end of this new week, Father, surprise them in that mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Let this tight, mighty Father take away struggle, pain, sickness, diseases out of their life and family in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Father, I pray and I join my faith with them, whatever they are expecting, that before the end of this year, mighty Redeemer, heaven is your throne. The earth is your footstool. Everything they need to end this year gloriously by this seed today. Father, let your name, let your power, let your blessing be seen in the life of this one in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, ancient of day. Thank you, King of Glory. Hallelujah. In Jesus' most perfect and glorious name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Yeah. Yeah,
that song once more, but I want to tell you a story before we take it once more. Praise the Lord. Some of us may have heard the story. It's one of my favorite stories. And it's something that I'm sure we've all heard. It circulated on the social media a while ago. It was a story of a poor old man. He was very poor. He had no hope. At his age, he was driving Kekema at his old age. Hallelujah. Amen. Quickly tell your neighbor, do you know what a Jodi means? Okay, I'll continue with my story. So this man was driving his Kekema, an old man that should have been happily enjoying retirement. He was thinking, where will he pay this bill? What will happen to him and all that? In his absent-mindedness, in his battered Kekemawa that he was owing on, he went to ram into the back of this expensive-looking jeep. Hey. And the man, young man behind the steering came out and started to speak a lot of drama. He looked at the man, said he hit my car, he first gave him one slap. Whoops! He disgraced the man, he abused him, he slapped him, he did everything. Ah, and the man was thinking, oh my God, at this age, at this stage. But they were causing traffic. And people could not pass. And in one car behind was an ordinary looking man, but he wasn't so ordinary. And so they came near to find out what is happening? Why is this traffic? It was on the way somewhere important. And he heard the story. And the man would say, ah, gentleman, relax now. Is it because of your car that you slapped this old man? He turned to him and said, what do you mean? Do you know how much my car costs? And he began to talk. The man was silent for a while. And he couldn't take it anymore. He said, I will show you that where your money starts, where your money ends, is where my own starts. Say, how much is your car? He said, I beg your pardon? My car? This car costs 15 million. He called and said, bring my briefcase. They brought it, they opened it up, dollars. He counted the equivalent of 15 uh, million naira. You know, in dollars, it won't be a lot. And he handed it to him. He said, now, clear out of this car. Where are the particulars now? Get out of this place. The man was disgraced. He was embarrassed. Then he turned to the man and said, Baba, sorry, this car belongs to you from now. <laughs> not only that, not only that, he said, I don't want you to sell this car. I want you to enjoy it. This is my car. Contact me in the office. Let's see what we can do to help you to sort you out. Let somebody shout hallelujah. The old man was going out. He was in a bad shape. No hope. And suddenly, suddenly, I said suddenly, God showed up for him. I'm sure by the time he got home, when they must have been thinking, did you, did you make any money so we can at least eat? When they saw him, a jeep showing, pulling up in their company they say, who is this visitor? <laughs> when he showed the cash the man gave him and his car, they would have almost fallen down. Why did I share that story? Because I believe that God can visit somebody here yeah. before the end of this year. Yeah. It doesn't take God 10 days. It doesn't take him one day to visit and to turn things around for good. Yeah. And that is why today we're going to pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to pray that God will visit you. You are going to pray for yourself. You are going to make a demand on the heavens and say, Father, I need your intervention today. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We've had many sermons this year, right? I think if we take a few minutes to pray, it's not bad. Abby, yes. praise the Lord. But we're going to take that song once more. Yeah,
sit down for about five minutes before uh, we pray. But before you sit down, I want you to pray and say, Father. Father. Ah, okay. Father. 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 Let me tell you something. God has handed over the earth to man. He will not interfere or intervene except you invite him. If you think he sees me, then why isn't he doing something? You are joking and you are wasting your time. That is his, he has voluntarily relinquished earth and said, you know what? I'm a spirit. You go and take care of the earth. And he gave us dominion. So when you want him to intervene in the physical dimension, you need to invite him and say, Father, because if you started seeing spirit walking around, would you not be afraid? Uh -huh. So you have to invite him. So when we say you call Father and you are calling as if they are begging you, Father, show your power in my life. Intervene in my life and in my situation. In the name of Jesus, go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Father, today, Lord, I have come to pray. I'm asking for your intervention. I'm asking that you move in my life. your holy name. We give you praise and we give you glory. Lord, we ask that you please answer us by fire today. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Now let somebody shout hallelujah. God bless you. You may please be seated just for a few minutes. If you followed the Holy Ghost service last Friday, the Congress, uh, I mean when I say last Friday, I don't mean two days ago, I mean last week Friday. And the Jew on the Holy Ghost night took us through some very simple, you know, talking about prayer. And there's some things that I learned. I've already shared some of them, but I want us to go through them again today. Praise the name of the Lord. Just about six or seven very quickly. Talked about different kinds of prayer. The prayer of Thanksgiving, Psalm 100 verse 4. Psalm 100 verse 4. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. We need to be thankful for this year. We need to appreciate God for what he has done. You may think you don't have everything you want, but it could have been worse. Some people are dead. Some are in rehabilitation center or COVID um, centers. Some have lost their businesses. Some have lost their homes. Even the developed world is going through serious pains. But thank God you are here. And God has kept you. Maybe it wasn't so fantastic, but it could have been worse. We need to thank him. We need to bless his holy name. Can someone go ahead and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Number two, you need to praise him. That's another kind of prayer. Praise, a prayer of praise. David said in that sin in Psalm 34 verse 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. You know how, why praise is so important? Praise is one of the most important demonstrations of faith. Amen. Because when David said, I will praise the Lord at all times, he was going through difficulty. In fact, it was at the time when he had to pretend he was mad because he was being uh, chased by the king. So it's not like he was enjoying, but David was saying, no matter what I go through, I will praise God. In other words, I will not cast away my confidence in God. In other words, I believe God. I believe that he is and that he's the one who's able to save and to deliver me. Praise the name of the Lord. So when you praise God, 
Ah, you are saying, Lord, I trust you. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, what do you think they were doing at you know, the fiery furnace? They were praising God. Said, oh, okay, Nebuchadnezzar, we're not careful to answer you. The God that we serve is able. In other words, he's mighty. He's the miracle walking God. He's the one that can do things even at the last minute. He's the one that <laughs> 10 days is too much for him to save us. He said, we are the fiery furnace. God can save us. He can deliver us. Because for him, nothing is impossible. They may not have said it physically, but I'm telling you what was going on in their hearts. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. They were praising him, even in the fiery furnace. Why do you think Paul and Silas too were praising God at the midnight hour when they were in the prison? So it's an important form of, of prayer when we praise God. Number three, when we worship. Hallelujah. Psalm 18 verse 1 says, Psalm 18 verse 1, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will, you can add your own to it, my, my God in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my heart. Go ahead and worship God. Father, I bless your name. You are the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Alpha, the Omega. This year, people have been falling, but God has kept me. He has preserved me. I have not had to eat from the dustbin. I have not had to go naked. Oh, I bless your name, Lord. I appreciate you. I worship you. You deserve all my praise and all my glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Wherever they are praising God, never be a spectator. Don't sit there and look at somebody like him as they are praising God. Is it not my father you are praising? You are praising my father and I will shut up. It's not possible. Praise the Lord. In John chapter 4, verse 23, we understand that our cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh sought to worship him. You know what's why I read this scripture? You know what happens when you worship God? It says that God is seeking for those that worship him in spirit and in truth. He's looking throughout the whole earth. He's searching. He said, ah, where can I find a worshiper? Let me check Lekki. Okay, this, ah, I think I can hear somebody there. I think his name is Wally. Yes, I think he's, I think he's worshiping me. I, I better visit him. Praise the Lord. When you are worshiping God, he comes looking for you. Other forms, you are the one that goes. But when you worship, he's the one that comes looking for you, especially if you are worshiping him in spirit and in truth. So if you want God to come closer to you, after thanking him, just begin to worship him. Before you know it, you'll be knocking at your door. Praise the name of the Lord. Then when you do that, you can go into supplication. That's another kind of prayer. And it's a prayer. <laughs> like Gio put it, it's more like begging. It's like, Lord, just have mercy on me. First Kings 8, 46. First Kings 8, 46 says, If they sin against you, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them to the enemy, so that they carry them away captive unto the land of the enemy, far or near, yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land whither they were carried captive and repent and make supplication unto thee. You know that supplication is like God help me, have mercy, save me. Whether it's a financial situation, whether it's a health situation, whether it's your business or your education, your marriage, supplication is Lord, please help me. As you pray such a prayer, I know he will answer you quickly in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Intercession. This is one we don't do often because we usually like to pray for me, mine, and intercession is when you focus on somebody else. Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah. Numbers 14, 11. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will these people provoke me? How long will it be before they believe me? For all the signs which I have showed among them. God was angry. He said, I will smite them, in verse 12, with the pestilence and disinherit them. I will make of thee a greater nation. In other words, I'm going to scrap these people and I will start all over again with you. Did Moses say, ah, Lord, that one too is good. <laughs> no. Moses said unto the Lord, then the Egyptians shall hear it. And they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land. For they have heard that in other words, they will say, hey, don't mind that God. He wasn't able to say. He wasn't able to deliver his people. He abandoned them halfway. So intercession is when you're interceding for somebody else. You're interceding for, and for someone else. Praise the name of the Lord. I have a few minutes more, so let me move quickly to what I want us to focus on. Demand. Praise the Lord. That's another kind of prayer. 
An example that Joe gave was Matthew 6, 9 to 11. He said, give us this day our daily bread. I have three different versions here, and I want to read you this scripture. NLT says, give us today the food we need. The Young's Literal Translation says, our appointed bread, give us today. Good News Version says, give us today the food we need. Message Bible says, keep us alive with three square meals. Demand is not, please, can I have? Demand is, guy, you are not going anywhere to use. Answer me today. I'm not saying you should call God guy. <laughs> please, oh, I'm not there. What I'm saying is that when you basically, as it were, hold God by the hand, have you seen them begging a powerful person? And you go on your knees and hold the, the ankle and you beg, I'm not, I won't let you go today. You must answer me. That's what you're doing when you demand. You are done with the formalities. You don't have time for, oh, thou that sittest in the circle of the earth. Oh, that, no, it's like emergency. Father, I need you to answer me. Now, now, now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Demand. When you make a demand, you are not asking. You are saying, this is what, you Lord, you are a faithful God. You are my Father. You have already made provision in your word. Therefore, do what you said you would do. Praise the Lord. Like the example he gave, a, new, a baby wakes up in the morning. Does it go to mom and dad and say, Mommy, please, can I have some breakfast? And he begins to cry. Mommy is the one that will be running up and down. That's demand. Command. I like this one. I will come back to this one. Decree is the last one. Job 22, 28. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. Elijah said, It will not rain except by my word. And so it was. He made a decree. And it came to pass. Praise the name of the Lord. I want you to stand to your feet. So, the different kinds of prayer. Thanksgiving. Praise. Worship. Supplication. Intercession. Demand. Command. And then decree. But I want us to use the uh, command today. Because command intrigues me. Isaiah 45, 11. Thus saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, and his Maker, ask, of, ask me of things to come concerning my sons, and this is where we're going, and concerning the works of my hand, command ye me. I told you in some, in some broadcast some time ago that I've seen this scripture before I know it, but it's too heavy for my mind. How can I command God? Who am I? But I received fresh revelation and understanding at the Congress. Is it not God's word? Yeah. Did you not say you honor his word above his? Ha. Yeah. Ah. So the enemy has been cheating me. God has given me the authority to command him concerning the works of his hand. And that is exactly how we're going to pray today. Amen. Amen. I don't know what that issue is. That you are saying, ah, this thing cannot move, cannot wait till 2021. What is that thing you have been praying about? What is that situation that is urgent? Peter was walking on water, he began to sink. Did he have time to say, oh Lord, please, oh, if you are not busy, don't let me know. Or Daniel in the lion's den? No. This one is a straight to the point. So I want, to, I want you to raise up your voice and say, Father, Father. I come into your word in Isaiah 45, 11. You gave me the liberty to command you concerning the works of your hand. Therefore, now go ahead. Go ahead and command God concerning the works of his hand. Go ahead and talk to God. People are not even praying. You don't command silent. This is not about silent prayer. Command ye me.
mighty name we have prayed. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. One of the first things you need to do in order to even have the opportunity to command God is to be a child of God. As so if you're here this morning and you have never given your life to Jesus, raise your hand quickly please so I can pray with you. That's all you need to do. Otherwise your command will be in vain. You're here this morning and you have never given your life to Jesus, please raise your hand so that way I can pray with you. Go ahead. Anybody? Father, we bless your name. We give you all glory. We give you all honor. We give you all adoration. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. I trust God that every prayer you have prayed will be answered by fire Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And I trust God that you're going to end this year on a glorious note Amen. and that you will begin your journey flying high in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, let me quickly remind us, um, crossover service, next month, next week is Worship the King. Woo. Hallelujah. We will give you details and we're also getting set for crossover service. God bless you in Jesus' name. Christian Church of God, and we are in yes. His throne room. Hallelujah. It's a place of His presence, it's a place of His power, where decrees are made and nations are impacted. Amen. Amen. We will impact nations for good in Jesus' name. So if you are here and you are worshipping with us for the very first time, we'd like to know you. Please rise up on your feet wherever you are. It's your first time in our midst. Hallelujah. Very, welcome. Very, 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 very. the Lord. Please, we encourage that you kindly fill the forms you have been given very carefully. 
and um, immediately after Sunday school, somebody would meet with you. Please um, be seated on this side. Or, Stevie, do we have another means of doing it this morning? Okay. All right. So immediately after Sunday school, so we're going into a session of Sunday school, and. Um, well, today is our Welfare Sunday. Um, we're going to do something a little different this morning. We're going to be giving the men the welfare package. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, men, men are the head of the family. They will take it home. Amen. And if you don't have a family at home, you keep it for them when they come. <laughs> As a private joke. Yes, Hallelujah. It will soon be public. It will soon be public. We are praying. So the men will be given packages. So women, hallelujah. We have been collecting and collecting. This year is a little different. So the men will collect the packages. Um, immediately after Sunday school, however, we will all be partaking of the breakfast. Hallelujah. Amen. Pastor has done pancake. Amen. Amen. Anointed pancake. Amen. Amen. So he'll be giving us pancake, you know, for the first service um, people. So please workers don't collect pancake. Amen. If there are some women that their husbands don't come to church, we will bring them next year. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> eh? We pray for them. We pray for their husbands that from next year, in the name of Jesus, they will not be missing from the house of God. Shout hallelujah, somebody. Uh, the people who mean it, you will shout a living hallelujah. We'll be in church next year in Jesus' name. Um, so I think uh, the next thing is for Sunday school. So for first service, sir. Oh, the offering. I beg your pardon. I've been doing Martha ministry this morning. So I'm not uh, flowing. Pastor will help me with offering because my bag is somewhere. <laughs> it's somewhere, somewhere. Let's lift up our offerings as we pray. Father, we thank you for the blessing from which we are able to bring this. You are the one who commanded that we bring our offerings. Father, we have come. We ask that you please receive us and receive our offerings in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, let it come back to us in multiple folds as harvest. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So on our seats, the ushers will collect our offering. And immediately after now, we'll go into Sunday school. Immediately after Sunday school, the ushers will lead us in batches. Because, you know, we are still managing space. And we still have to do social distancing. So the ushers will lead us in batches to please pick up our breakfast. You have some choices, some wonderful choices. There will be people there to attend to us, and the Lord will continue to bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. So our offering will be collected. Let's share the grace together for best service uh, people. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. So the welfare package will be shared now for first service people. After now, no, I mean, there's no more sharing of the welfare. Praise the Lord. 